Remember the dragon blood wine? It's time to bottle it. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying Brews. We are ready to bottle dragon blood wine. And what we're going to do for that, this is going to be a sparkling or carbonated wine. So, I have some sugar, and we have three liters of this wine. So, because I always go with one ounce per gallon, a normal gallon bottle is about four liters. Three liters would be about three quarters. So, I have three quarters of an ounce by weight of plain old white sugar for priming. We'll show you that in just a moment. But for now, we're going to take the pitcher, put it over here. I'm going to take the wine and put it up here. Now what you can't see because this is a really dark brew is we have about a that much rather pulp. significant that uh, settled out. So we're going to be very, very careful when we rack this. Um, because of the type of bottle this is, it's the siphon only goes straight down. There's not a lot of tilting with this one. Do you want to... Yeah, I'll just use the bottling. Okay. We have the bottling wand already on the end, so I'll just hold this down while it's going. We just have to be very, very careful to not stir up too much of that lease. Are you ready? I am ready. We're ready. You might need to go further in. Oh, yeah, you can't. but I... Uh -huh. yeah. She can't put it further in because the volume of the siphon will overtake. Are we going? We're going. We will not bore you with the actual racking of this, but we'll see in a few. Okay, so a lot of people have asked, um, how much is an acceptable amount of loss? Well, there's really no right answer to that because every brew is a little bit different. This one, because we used whole fruit, there's a lot of small particulates that settle to the bottom. And if I look here, I would call this an acceptable amount of loss. Now, there's quite a bit in that bottle, but only about that much of it, maybe a quarter inch, if that, is actual wine. The rest is trube and stuff that I don't want in there. I just don't want that in my bottles. So. Is it acceptable? Yes. Am I happy leaving that much? Of course not. No. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes. I would rather have that little tiny bit of wastage and see an inch in the bottom of the bottle than have, you know, this much stuff in the bottom of a bottle that I just handed to a friend and said, hey, be careful when you pour that. You know, that's just not the way I like to do things. So I'm, I'm playing it a little bit safe. All right. All right. So the next step is priming. A lot of people get confused on this and they don't realize that priming simply means adding sugar or some fermentable to the wine to let it carbonate. Can you use fruit juice? Of course you can. You just have to measure how much sugar is in there so that you get three quarters of an ounce in this much or one ounce per gallon of wine. That's the best way to go. So that would mean like 28 grams. So if you want to measure the sugar in fruit juice, how much fruit juice do you have to add? But you have to be very careful. At a certain point, you might reinstitute fermentation too much and you can make a mess of things. Or you can dilute it so far that it's not the same wine anymore. So be careful. That's why I like to use sugar. It's fairly neutral. It doesn't add a lot to this at all. And I mean, it's in such a small quantity, it's not adding much anyway. It's there to make bubbles. That's it. If I wanted to back sweeten or if I wanted to add other flavors, that's a whole different thing, okay? This wine is dry also. That's critical. This is not where it's got a lot of sugars in it. Because if it went past tolerance, it won't prime. <sighs> so much to know. Let me throw this in here and get this mixed up. And you want to be careful that you do mix it up very, very, very well. Um, resist the temptation to try to use confectioner sugar unless it is absolutely pure confectioner sugar. Because most confectioner sugar, though it has the right texture and it dissolves so quickly, it also has cornstarch in it to keep it from clumping. And cornstarch will do funny things. Plus, it might make little floaters and stuff in your bottles. Another one of those, hey, don't mind those floaters in that bottle when you're drinking it. You know, it's not cool. But you might be wondering, if it's March 15th, and the last time we looked at this was December December 4th of 2019. So that's like uh, four months. Why four months in between? Well, for one, I wanted it to age a little bit and clear. For two, we had no bottles. <laughs> we were out of bottles. So instead, we we're actually using something that I wouldn't normally use for wine. But I thought, you know, why not? We're using essentially a beer bottle. This is a 500 milliliter bottle, um, also known as a 16 ounce for all you American types, which we are too. And it's a swing top. And I thought, you know what? This is probably absolutely the perfect size for us to use because we open a bottle of wine with dinner or something and we end up with, you know, about that much in the bottom or we have to finish the whole thing or whatever. This is like two glasses. 
So we're going to try it. And while I was doing all that talking, I stirred this up. And I think we're good to go. So again, I put this up on the box of elevation. And get a bottle. I'll put this out of the way. I'm going to show you the basics of how to bottle. But the actual bottling will happen underneath the table because we need the extra elevation. All right, so I put the bottling wand in here. Bottling wand is the thing with the little stopper on the end. Let's it lets the liquid flow or stop, right? That's important. Because if you just have a tube going in here, it's difficult to stop when you hit the bottle and it makes a mess. Learn from my mistakes. I'm going to use the lap method, which means I put them right here. I have two. So I hold one down while she starts the siphon up. And we don't have to worry about any sediment or anything in here, so it can just sit in the bottom. And I fill the bottle all the way up into the neck and then pull out the uh, bottling wand, put it in the next one, and we just continue on. A little word about headspace. See that? See how high that went? That's about where you want them. If you leave too much headspace, air is compressible and can cause things to explode, whereas the liquid is not compressible. It sounds counterintuitive, but that's what I've been told. I am not a scientist, so I'm just going with the flow here. Okay, since someone asked me, um, I just I also want to point out we got five whole bottles here, okay, and those are going to carbonate. Then I have this one with that much left, and in the pitcher there's that much. People have said, what do you do with that? Well, you can pour that in a glass and drink it, okay? Or you can do what I'm going to do right now. But this comes with a caveat, which I'll go over in a second. At this moment, people are cringing, wondering if I will spill this. Me too. Almost. All the jokes about making messes. Gotta have a little fun sometimes. Not a drop. Anyway, this bottle here, I'm not gonna carbonate it. Due to the aforementioned extra headspace in there, that'll make a bomb. Okay, what's going to happen to this guy? It's going to go right in the fridge, and we'll probably drink it within the next day or two. You want to make sure you do, because if it sits out or if it gets warm, it will explode. Okay, just be really careful. I, I, I like to make a big deal about those kind of things, because to me, that's dangerous. There's a lot of things that you can do that might make this not taste so good, but it won't hurt you. Flying glass, not a good thing. We have cats. Those are my kids. I really don't want to see bad things happen to them, and they tend to get all over and things so yeah anyway enough about that so like I said this one's gonna get drank quickly these five they're gonna sit in a box why a box same reason if they explode hopefully the shards will get stuck into the box not into us and uh, you know it contains the mess just a little bit more we actually have a big plastic tub but beer is in there right now so we have a lot of stuff carbonating at the moment the entire corner over there is pretty much just a big bump waiting to happen <laughs> <laughs> love thinking of it that way but it's kind of true lots and lots of gas over there is basically what i'm trying to say anyway how long does it take usually a week 10 days sometimes two weeks sometimes even three weeks this one because it went dry and the yeast was probably still pretty active because we used 71b in this it only went to about it'll be 12.1 percent with the carbonation so that's below the tolerance by quite a bit that yeast is probably ready for more so it'll probably carbonate it up pretty quick and we will be whoa, and we will be back with a tasting for you when that happens in the meantime thanks for watching guys and have a great day Bye-bye.